we're going to be taking a look at superlative propositions in predicate logic. A superlative proposition has a relational predicate. It's a superlative. In other words, we have something that is larger than something else, or greater than something else, or heavier than something else. We're going to be working through several examples. The Sears Tower is taller than every building, for instance. It's a false proposition, but we can still translate that into predicate logic. Then we have the Sears Tower is taller than any building in Chicago. That is a true statement. Next, the Sears Tower is the only building taller than the Trump Tower in Chicago. Then we have nothing in which the AN building is taller than is taller than the Sears Tower. And finally, we have the Trump Tower is not the only building that the Sears Tower is taller than. We're going to be dealing with each of these propositions, but first let's review what a relational predicate is. For example, let's say we have Socrates teaches Plato. So teaches is a relational predicate. and it is a two-placed predicate. So as a predicate, two subjects, or two individuals, so to speak, attach themselves to that single predicate. So when we translate that into predicate logic, we can get capital T for teaches, that's our relational predicate, lowercase s for Socrates, and lowercase p for Plato. Hence, we have Socrates teaches Plato. And remember, order counts, so this is not the same thing as capital T, lowercase p, lowercase s, because that says Plato teaches Socrates. And with our example, it's saying Socrates teaches Plato, not the other way around. So this clearly doesn't work. So we have a two-place predicate. But when we consider these various superlative propositions, for example, the Sears Tower is taller than every building, we do have that relational predicate, that two-place predicate, but we also have a universal affirmative statement because we have that every. So we're going to need a universal quantifier. But it turns out we additionally need to make use of identity. So let's consider this first uh, main example. The Sears Tower is taller than every building. So how should we symbolize that into predicate logic? Well, the first thing generally speaking, we should do is to state our simple matters of fact. And then we can get into the universal affirmative statement. So we can just say that the Sears Tower is a building. So capital B for building, that's our predicate, and is a predicate of the Sears Tower, so lowercase s. So we have the Sears Tower is a building. But then the question is, could we do the following? Could we say that the Sears Tower is a building and for all x, if x is a building, then the Sears Tower is taller than x. Would that work? This claims that if x is any building whatsoever, then the Sears Tower is taller than any x. But that's false, because x can be the Sears Tower. So this will not work, because it implies that the Sears Tower is taller than the Sears Tower, which is obviously impossible. So when we consider this taller than superlative, this relational predicate, this is anti-reflexive as a relation. In other words, if x is taller than y, y cannot be taller than x. That's just common sense. Or in other words, if x is greater than y, it obviously cannot be the case that x is less than y. And so, taller than is inherently an anti-reflexive relation. And moreover, this also implies that we're going to specify that x cannot be the Sears Tower, because we cannot have a situation where we say that the Sears Tower is taller than the Sears Tower. And so, we'll say instead that, first off, that the Sears Tower is a building, and for all x, if x is a building and x is not identical to the Sears Tower, then the Sears Tower is taller than x. And now we have something that works. 
but we have to specify that x cannot be s. Otherwise, we get into that problem where the Sears Tower is taller than the Sears Tower, which is obviously impossible. So this is a good translation into predicate logic. We have the Sears Tower is a building, and for all x, here's our antecedent, here's our consequent to our conditional. If x is a building and x is not identical to the Sears Tower, then the Sears Tower is taller than x. Let's try the next example. This time we have the tallest building in Chicago is the Sears Tower. Once again, it is a superlative proposition. We have a claim to be the tallest building in Chicago. And this time, this proposition is true. So the first thing we should do is just state our simple one-place predicate facts. So we can say that the Sears Tower is in Chicago. So Chicago is a predicate, capital C. And it's about the Sears Tower, lowercase s. Also, the Sears Tower is a building, so capital B for a predicate and s for that subject. And now we will have our universal affirmative proposition. So for all x, if x is in Chicago and x is a building, and remember, we must say that x is not identical to the Sears Tower because we don't want to say something that's false. In other words, we don't want to say that the Sears Tower is taller than the Sears Tower. So that's the antecedent. And then in our consequent, we'll say that the Sears Tower is taller than x. And so we have the Sears Tower is in Chicago, and the Sears Tower is a building, and for all x, our antecedent, our consequent, if x is in Chicago, and x is a building, and x is not the Sears Tower, then the Sears Tower is taller than it. Sears Tower is the only building taller than the Trump Tower in Chicago. Another true statement, how should we deal with it? Well, this time, notice that the relational predicate is that x is going to be taller than the Trump Tower. We want to say that there's only one building that's taller than the Trump Tower in Chicago, namely the Sears Tower. So let's say for all x, if x is a building and x is in Chicago, and we want to say that x is taller than the Trump Tower, so lowercase t for Trump Tower, so x is taller x is taller than the Trump Tower, and we'll do a biconditional this time, if and only if x is identical to the Sears Tower. So this feature of exclusivity, we're going to make this into a biconditional and say that x must be identical to s. So for all x, x is a building and x is in Chicago and x is taller than the Trump Tower if and only if x is identical to the Sears Tower. So we have that feature of exclusivity there. Now we have nothing in which the AN building is taller than is taller than the Sears Tower. It's a pretty cool example. Note the nothing, so the denial. We really have the denial of an existential statement because we're saying that no such building exists. Okay, Because, in fact, I'm not going to draw this good at all, but to say, let's just say this is the Sears Tower. It looks nothing like that, but in any case, that is larger, in fact, than the AN building. So anything in which the AN building is taller than is necessarily going to be shorter than the Sears Tower. Thus, nothing in which the AN building is taller than is taller than the Sears Tower, right? So this, let's say, is x. So x is shorter than the AN building, and so it's shorter than the Sears Tower. Now that nothing implies the denial of an existential statement, because we're saying that no such building exists. So we'll say that it is not the case that there exists an x such that x is a building and 
the AN building is taller than X and X is taller than the Sears Tower. We're saying that is not the case. So we're, we are denying this existential statement. It is not the case that there exists an X such that X is a building and the AN building is taller than X and X is taller than the Sears Tower because there is no such thing. And our final example, the Trump Tower is not the only building that the Sears Tower is taller than. So we have an existential statement. We're saying there is such a building that is shorter than the Sears Tower, or in other words, that the Sears Tower is taller than. So let's first do our relational predicate that the Sears Tower is taller than the Trump Tower, or given that. So we'll say capital T lowercase s, lowercase t, and there exists an x such that x is a building, and we're saying that the Trump Tower is not the only building that the Sears Tower is taller than, so x is not going to be the Trump building, and the Sears Tower will be taller than it. And by the way, we don't really have to say that x is not the Sears Tower in this case, because we're just saying that there exists some x out there to satisfy this condition. Unlike that universal quantifier where you have to say, hey, x cannot be s, but in this case, we're just saying there is some x out there such that this condition is satisfied. So the Sears Tower is taller than x. So we don't have to explicitly say that x is not the Sears Tower in this case. So we have the Sears Tower is taller than the Trump Tower, and there does exist an X such that X is a building, and X is not identical to the Trump Tower, and the Sears Tower is taller than it. So this is our overview of superlative propositions. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you for watching.